Okay, now, here's what real good looks like. Okay, Allison Fisher, can you guys see this? Okay, now we'll just play it in full speed here and then I'll break it down for you. She's looking to make a long shot here in between these two balls. And you can see how much care she has when she enters the shot. Now watch after she hits the ball, watch her head. 1,001, 1,002, just spot on. You can put a glass of wine on her head. She's not gonna spill it on my carpet. So now look at this effort on the shot. And this is out with, without any guidance. This is just how she does it, okay? So the time code is 000, as you can see right here, okay? Now here she comes into her shot and there's eye shifts going on here. She's looking down at the cue ball. And then now, just as she starts to assume her stance here, see the eyes shift down towards me right here. See the eyes came down to the target right here and then set, okay? Now, she has not moved her cue at all. You don't see her swinging into the ball. Okay, and do you see how straight the line is here between her elbow and the back? When she, so when she goes from standing all the way back here to entering that shot, it's eye shift, eye shift, eye shift, set, check, but there's no cueing motion. So we're at 7.7 .7 seconds worth of work, and this preliminary work is what adds her consistency. She's already made the ball. When she sets up here and doesn't get out of here, she's already made the ball. The practice swings are not for aiming. The practice swings are for grooving the path the shaft is gonna pass through on the final stroke, and to give you a gauge for the speed based on how far back you're pulling the cue. Okay, now, we're at 7.7 .7 seconds, okay, at this point. Now, right here, about eight seconds, there, you can see she takes her first practice swing right here, and it's just at eight seconds. Eight seconds worth of work. Most people have already shot and missed by now, by the way. Okay, then she does four practice swings. We'll just let it play. Now, watch her back swing, slow back, boom, right through, okay? Now, let's go right back to where she starts to pull back. Right there, okay? Time code, 1702 on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, but it's 1702. Then she pulls back. And right there, oh, that wasn't it. Okay, I was early. That was one practice swing early. So there's a lengthy pause right there. So it's right here, so it's 15, 15.48, and there is impact, 17.19. So 1.7, 1.8 seconds right there. Amateurs are 0.3 or 0.4. The average amateur is 0.4 to 0.8. Average pro is 1.2 to 1.8. It's a big difference. But subtly, if, you, if somebody looked at you and said, well, maybe he's a little slower, I don't know. You know I mean, it seemed a little slower. It's such a short span of time, it's never been relevant in your entire life before. It's huge in pool. Because that contributes to that consistency and that smoothness of that transition. The most fragile place in the stroke is on transition from backswing to forswing. So when that gets quick or abrupt, we distort the tip up there, that micro dot, the millimeter that you can't afford. For those of you that don't know what a millimeter looks like, it's the edge of a dime. It's not much, okay? And if you're two dimes off, you're not a good player. You're an okay player at best. Not, you're not gonna play here on the five by 10. And these guys have trained themselves through hours, thousands of hours. Bustamani and Duel last night, the match started at 9.30 p.m. They played all day, and now you throw them on a 10-foot table, and then they're shooting almost 800 or, or almost 900 through the match. No, it's a lifetime of work to get to that. What you're witnessing, there's no way you can just say, oh, he's good in three years and come out here and do that. It's that much more intricate and that much more detailed. Okay, so this is, this is totally what a pro looks like right here. Now, you wanna see what her problem is? I'll show you. She'll really appreciate this too. I'm sure, when she hears about it. 
This is like a doctor letting you look at somebody else's medical records. But anyway, um, watch the cue as it comes through. Let me blow this up just a little bit. You see the red line I put on there? Now she's, her elbow's in just a little bit, not perfect. Pretty good, very good. But when she came from Snooker, she didn't do this, just so you know. And so now, look at the cue. Do you see how it kind of bobbles outward from their body? See it right there? Can you see it? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah, and so a little clearance issue. We had to open up her stance, just a hair, just a whisker. Got a little weird, really weird. She comes one week per year at her own expense that we train together, just on little idiosyncrasies like this, just to tune it up. And she's in the Hall of Fame. She's won every tournament you've ever heard of. And you can, more than once, okay? So, yet she's still passionate enough about it to still continue to do it. Nick Varner's the same way. He'll be here later this week. I call Nick sometimes. It'll be a Saturday at noon. I say, what's up, Nick? Well, I'm hitting a few balls right now. You know what I mean? There's no more tournaments to win, you know, but the guy still loves pool like that, and that's what it takes. Okay, so anyway, so there's, there's what real good looks like. This kid here, he's a superstar. I love him like my own son. This is Landon Shuffett. He's trying to make a 10 ball way down here. He's on a big run. He doesn't know I'm filming him, okay? And so we're at school, and watch the time he takes setting up. Aiming, aiming, aiming. And set. Now look, at there's no cue motion. Go back. Okay, so he's aiming here. Once he sets that tip, you don't see any swinging. It's real quiet. And stop right there, check it. Now the practice swings. Now it's a real short practice swing. Stop, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now the slow back swing, smooth transition. And that pause with the tip right at the cue ball, it's time for a visual confirmation. But it's not just an eye glance at this point. No, 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 it's a, it's a gaze. He goes down there and looks and looks and looks and then comes back and commit at that point. So there's six steps going on here. While he's standing, it's aiming and decision making. Deciding where he's gonna hit the cue ball. Number two, put your tip down and check it. Do you love it or not? If you don't love it, get out. Start over. Get in a real clean entry. That real clean entry, you saw Alistair Fisher do it, you saw Landon Sheffer do it. Okay, then at that pause, if you like it, commit. Now, three practice swings. Stop dead, check it again. And that's step four, the final pause, where he stops right there, and I was counting, 1,001, about four seconds there. And it's work. And then, once you're at the end of that, if you like it, commit. It's slow back swing, straight through the cue ball, keep your body still. So the body, you're gonna be like the stable, like a statue here. The only thing that moves is your eyes and the elbow. Okay, so here you can look at it. <clears throat> Six steps here. Step one, check it. Confirm, step three, the practice swings, then there's a pause. Right here's the pause, commit, slow back, step four, step five, slow back, finish. Step six, where'd my tip go? When you check your tip after you've hit the cue ball, you then have the capacity to determine if you're making a good swing or not. So it's six steps, and we've got to get those ingrained in your body so you don't know another way to do it but all six steps. It requires discipline. Pool is nothing more than discipline that's got to be fueled by passion. You've got to be interested enough to put the work into it. If you just halfway do it, then you're just going to get halfway results. And it's a total commitment until you, like, if I show you Allison Fisher at home in her pajamas, she only does one thing, when, even when you're not looking. Because otherwise, you're taking steps the whole wrong direction. Okay, you're going the whole wrong way. And with Landon, let's just go back to where he's at here, right when he starts to pull back, because you can see it really good here. Right, he's, paw okay, so it's right there. Right there. So the time code is 1548, okay? Now it's slow back, ladies and gentlemen. Oop, caught it. Right, come back here. Right there. So it was 15.48, there's 17.15. So that's 1.6 seconds. Uh, rough math, I'm not thinking, but. Okay, so you, you get my idea? Yeah. Amateurs, 0.4 to 0.8. Pros, 1.2 to 1.8. And it's a big deal. And I never knew it. Uh, here's what happened, how I learned it. Jerry Bryson, he's always telling me, slow your backswing down, slow your backswing down, slow your backswing down. So I, then I repeat that. Okay, slow my backswing down. 
But I never knew, what does that mean? Because theoretically, I could say, you know what, my backswing came back slower than the space shuttle just flew over. How much slower you want? Because I've never given a degree or a dimension of this, okay? So uh, I was thinking, yeah, how would I measure it? And I tried to do it with a stopwatch, but you can't do it mechanically. And I was thinking, oh, I got a time code on here. Let's just check it out. I've did hundreds of pros. I've did hundreds of amateurs. I'm telling you, it's 0.4 to 0.8 for amateurs. And it's 1.2 to 1.8. It's just universal. But it's still such a small fragment of time that you never, you never thought, is that important? I mean, maybe it was a little slower. I don't know. You know there's, no, it's huge. It's two to three times longer, but it's still such a short span of time. You don't say, come on, hurry up. We're going to be eight-tenths of a second late for Mark's Clinic if you don't hurry up. Okay? But it's huge in pool. And that's the part of it that people don't get. You know, and that's why I'm saying the devil's in the details. Who knew that it was that important? All right. One more, and then I'm going to help Mike. This is going to make Mike feel great about his game right here. This guy is a super nice man. He's nervous. Okay, he's going to just shoot a mid-range shot here. Okay, now you can see the whole stroke just fragments. And he's a serious guy. He hates being the worst player on his league team. Okay, he feels like he holds everybody down. And he only started pool when he was 68 years old. Now, he would tell you he's not nervous, but I will show you. The time code right now is 000. So this is total amateur, and it's just a mid-range shot. Now, he sets to the cue ball here, right here. And you can see, can you see he's way off to the left on a straight-in ball? For me, after doing it 46 years, it cost me 40% of my accuracy if I want to make this shot. It costs him way more. Okay, because he doesn't have any experience at it. So he's not on the vertical axis, so now the cue ball doesn't go straight due to squirt. Okay, and we're still under one and a half seconds here. Okay, so right here, now right as we get to, now he starts to take his practice swings. Right here, so we're at one and a half seconds, he's taking a practice swing. Allison Fisher was eight seconds setting up. Do you remember that? Eight seconds before she even moved her cue. He's one and a half. And he's in the wrong spot. Now he takes a couple practice swings. Okay, we'll get him out here where he's gonna shoot. Okay, right here's his final backswing. So it's about, let's see, right there, 440, okay? 4.4 seconds. Here he comes back. Now see the head lifting, watch the elbow. Q slashes all over. He's impacting the cue ball here at about 470. I'll be generous, three tenths, okay? Not even close, no. <laughs> and, but yet he would tell you he's not afraid, but his body gives him away because watch the body here. Yeah, I'm terrified, okay? So the whole thing is over with in under five seconds. And see that cue, look where the tip is. Even after it hits the ball, watch how far off to the side it goes. It's all off there, look at, look at. It's barely off the cue ball. The tip is way off to the side. You're trying to make a straight in. The worst part of it is he randomly makes some of the balls doing this. So it then validates, well, maybe it's okay. And you can see his body. He's coming all the way out of this thing right here. But yet he would tell you he's not scared. But his body gives him away. I already know he's scared to death. Okay, And naturally you would be because he knows I'm watching and everything. So. But nevertheless, this is what breaks down when you feel pressure. So when this is the eight ball, and we're going to Vegas if you make it, okay, and you get scared, and you're nervous, and you're uncertain, you're out of the moment. If I make it, we're going to Vegas. If I miss it, I've let the whole team down, everybody's disappointed, we've got to pay them $100, whatever it might be, okay? So when you can feel that type of pressure, if I make it, we're going to Vegas. If I miss it, we lose, I've let everybody down. You're out of the moment. You're thinking if and if, what will happen out here? You gotta get back to the moment here, what we're doing. And that's those six steps. That's your life preserver when you're nervous and that's what you gotta ingrain in your mind. It's the care with that setup, set your tip up there and confirm it. That's step two, confirming. Step three, now the practice swings, but not all three together. You can't get down and be moving around like an amateur. Okay, so it's a real quiet entry into it. And this requires work to install. And you think, whew, I'm exhausted from doing this. This is unbelievable how hard it is. And then, step four, pause. Check it one last time. Would you bet, would you bet, would you bet? Commit. Step five, slow backswing, ladies and gentlemen. Finish, and step six, where's the tip app after I shot it? 
If you're up and out of there, then you're not thinking right. You're consumed with the results rather than the process. Now, Mark, okay. let me ask a, a real quick, simple question. Then if anybody else has a question before you move on to the next thing. So I, I saw that, that guy, you know, and, and, his, and his tip could land here, could land here. Could land. Why does that matter so much just to, you know, uh, an amateur player? Why does it matter so much? What your stroke looks like. Okay. Good question. You guys already know. Because people buy technology shafts, so they recognize squirt. If you hit off center, it doesn't go straight anymore. And now you've had to compensate for that, and it's an estimation. How much is it going to squirt based on what type of cue ball we have, how far our off center is going to hit? So you enter in a myriad of problems in there. If you can stay on that vertical axis, this cue ball goes straight, another ball goes straight, a worn out cue ball goes straight. It's when you hit off center with different weights of the cue balls. The chalk is just sand. That's all it is. Sand. So every time you hit the chalk on the cue ball, you're sanding my cue ball, so you, the abrasive wears it down as time goes by. So usually you will not be playing with a cue ball that's ideal like these are. And usually it won't necessarily be hideously bad, it'll be somewhere in between. And they all squirt at different rates. Type of table, type of uh, shaft that you have, how hard you hit it, how far off center do you hit it. It's on and on and on. So that's why it matters coming through there straight. 